Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the White House Recovery Month Summit. Now, whether you're here today in person or watching online, thank you all for joining in this conversation today. Now, I also want to have a special welcome to some of the guests who are here and some of the others um, as well who may be coming, including the second gentleman, Doug Amhoff, as well as Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Um, and I'm really grateful to have uh, Representative Trone as well as Dean here with us today. Thank you. You know, President Biden has proclaimed September as National Recovery Month in recognition of the tens of millions of Americans in long-term recovery from substance use disorder. And as the President said, everyone who experiences substance use disorder is capable of achieving and sustaining recovery. And this administration will support all Americans on their recovery journey. Now, being in recovery is a remarkable achievement. And we celebrate everyone who has achieved it and everyone who helped them along the way. We're here today to talk about how we can improve recovery support infrastructure to help even more people get there. Now at a time when our nation is facing 108,000 overdose deaths in just 12 months, this mission has never been more important, more urgent, or more critical. We are really living in historic times. And President Biden and this administration are taking historic actions to meet this challenge. Now our North Star is to save lives and connect more Americans to treatment and recovery support services. Now let me say this, we're already seeing our efforts take effect. After more than 35% increase in overdose deaths during the first 18 months of the pandemic, the more recent 12-month rolling total overdose death counts have remained largely unchanged. The Biden-Harris administration has delivered more than $5 billion through American Rescue Plan to address mental health and substance use, as well as new funding for harm reduction, community-based prevention and treatment, and law enforcement, and so much more. Today, building on the progress that we have already made, the Biden-Harris administration is announcing several key investments and actions to reduce overdose deaths, to ensure that public health and law enforcement officials on the front line Education, okay. as 
as well. But um, I want to talk a little more broader. And Becky, uh, uh, thanks for hosting us. I appreciate it very much. 46 days to the midterms. We need to be crystal clear about what we're, what's on the ballot, because there is a heck of a lot at stake that's on the ballot. Right now, right now on the ballot, there's Social Security. It's on the ballot. You all have paid every single — and every paycheck you got, you paid it. <laughs> you paid into? Holy mackerel. <laughs> anyway. But there's a lot, really, truly, there's a lot in the ballot. There's a, this is, my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, Joey, don't compare me to the Almighty. Compare me to the alternative. <laughs> and we have a real alternative here that uh, this is not a — this is not going to be a uh, election that isn't of significant consequence. Gun safety for our kids and gun violence on the ballot. The idea that you start school this year and kids in many parts of the country are learning how to duck and cover Rather than — no, I'm serious. Think about it. Yeah. Rather than talking about reading, writing, and arithmetic is a very different circumstance. Yeah. It's not right. It's not who we are. It's not who we should be. And, folks, look, the, uh, the survival of our, our planet is on the ballot. And that sounds like hyperbole, but it genuinely is. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, the thing that we found out — and everybody found out — there's not a lot of total t climate deniers anymore after they've seen what happened this year. But guess what? We got a lot to do. You got to say hi to me. <laughs> we go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. <laughs> this woman helped me get an awful lot done. At any rate, but right now, and it's not hyperbole to suggest right now democracy itself, this on the ballot as well. Folks, I believe America is at an inflection point. And I apologize to — I'm a labor guy. I've spent a lot of time with all of you — not all of you, but with the labor movement since I got elected in my whole career. But — and I apologize if I repeat some things. But I think we're really at an inflection point. It occurs every three, four, five generations. It doesn't occur every election. And by inflection point, I mean that these moments, these are going to determine the shape of everything to come after, what we do now. What we do in the next several years is going to determine what this country looks like in 25 and 30 years. It's that consequential. Now, 46 days to choose. 46 days. And the path offered by Democrats is con contrasted with the one offered by the MAGA Republicans. And by the way, not all Republicans are MAGA Republicans. So I want to make that clear. And for years and years, I had a reputation. I remember I got beat up in the campaign by saying that I wanted to unify the country and unify the parties. I used to be able to do that. But things have changed a whole bunch. The MAGA Republicans control the Republican Party right now, and that's self-evident. That's self-evident. So there's a lot at stake here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. Earlier today, after opposing and obstructing everything we tried to do to stop progress for the last two years, the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, went to Pennsylvania and unveiled on what he calls a commitment to America. That's, a, that's a, a thin series of policy goals with little or no detail that he says Republicans are going to pursue if they regain control of the Congress. In the course of nearly an hour, here's a few of the things we didn't hear. We didn't hear him mention the right to choose. We didn't hear him mention Medicare. We didn't hear him mention Social Security. So let's take a look at what Kevin said today. He said Republicans want to, quote, preserve our constitutional freedom. That sounds great. I'm for doing that as well. We all are. But look at what they've actually done. The MAGA Republicans just cheered and embraced the first Supreme Court decision in our entire history, the first one in our entire history, that just didn't fail to preserve a constitutional freedom. It actually took away a fundamental right that had been granted by the same court to so many Americans, the constitutional right to choose. And now nearly half the states in the United States of America have either passed a ban on abortion or will shortly. And in many states, abortion is already banned even in cases of rape and incest, a fundamental change. Already 166 House Republicans have signed on to a bill that would ban abortion nationwide. 
And the senior senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, has proposed a national ban on abortion with criminal penalties put on doctors and put them in jail if they, in fact, violate the ban. So in 46 days, America's going to choose. If Republicans win control of the Congress, abortion will be banned. And by the way, it will be initially banned, but if they win Congress, I will veto it. Um, but, but think what's happening. They're banning in the case of, in, in case of rape and incest in many states. No exceptions. And they're, going to be, they're trying to criminalize it nationwide. But if you give me two more Democratic senators in the United States Senate, I promise you, I promise you, we're going to codify Roe. We'll once again make Roe the law of the land, and we'll once again protect the women's right to choose. And the power to get this done is in the hands of the American people, especially the women of America. And no, no, really, Justice, Justice Alito said the women can decide the outcome of this election, paraphrasing some a quote in the, in, in the actual decision. Well, he ain't seen nothing yet. I don't believe the MAGA Republicans have a clue about the power of American women. Let me tell you something. They're about to find out. And folks, Kevin McCarthy also talked about, quote, longer, healthier lives for Americans. Again, sounds great. Who's not for that? Well, just look at what the Republicans are doing. Already, 158 House Republicans have signed on to a Republican budget that will cut Medicare and Social Security. Already. The man in charge of electing Republicans in the U.S. Senate, Senator Rick Scott of Florida, has, pro has proposed a plan to put Social Security in the chopping block every five years. De novo. No, I'm not, I know this sounds like, but I, I really mean it. Look, go, go on, on, on the Internet and ch check it out. They've laid out the platform. It means every five years, according to if they succeed in the Senate, the Congress will vote to either cut, reduce, or completely eliminate Social Security or bring it back exactly as it is. What do you think the prospects of it coming back exactly as it is? You've been paying into Social Security ever since you got your first paycheck. Well, then there's Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. As my mother would say, God bless his soul. Look. He thinks waiting five years is too long. He wants to put, no, he wants to put Social Security in the chopping block every single year. If Congress doesn't vote to keep it, it goes away. An affirmative requirement to vote to keep it. Now think of that. It's not just Social Security he wants to put up. He wants Medicare, Medicaid benefits, every federal budget, every federal benefit gets up and has to be voted on every year. De novo, just from, the, from scratch. So in 46 days, America's going to face a choice. If Republicans control the Congress, Social Security will be on the chopping block. But if you support the Democrats, I promise you this, Social Security will be protected, period. And I won't let any MAGA Republican take it away. <laughs> Leader McCarthy talked about waiting, wanting a nation, a nation that's safe. Well, let's look at what Republicans have done to make it safe. They voted against virtually everything we've done to reduce crime and keep communities safe. The American Rescue Plan, it, it was the, the, uh, when we first got in office, we passed it. You know what was dying to do? An awful lot of mayors and, and, and governors and county executives, they, don't have, they didn't have a tax base because we, I was left in an economy that was in distress. So we said, here you go. We're going to give you this money so you can make sure you can keep your schools open. You can make sure you keep police departments open. Make sure you keep your hospitals open. Make sure you keep the fire departments open. And guess what? Every single Republican in the Congress voted against that. Every single Republican voted against it. Now, look, we're in a situation where now the MAGA Republicans are calling for def de de defunding. They're, they're defunding. Defunding the FBI. Now, let me tell you something. I don't think, and I know some of you weren't happy with me, I didn't think we should defund the police. I never believed that and said so at the time. 
but I sure in hell don't think we should be funding the FBI either. And then there's the, then there's the day we'll never forget on January 6th. What happened on the 6th? Law enforcement was attacked, assaulted, brutalized, and stomped on, and later several died. Some lost their lives because of that day. The MAGA Republicans didn't side with law enforcement. They sided with the insurrectionists, and they still do. Don't tell me you support law enforcement if you can't condemn what happened on January the 6th. Don't tell me that. You can't. You can't be pro-law enforcement and pro-insurrection. You can't claim to be a party of law and order and call the people who attacked the police on January 6th patriots. That's what they're called. And you can't claim to be for a safe America if you take orders from the NRA. Look, we just passed the most meaningful gun safety law in 30 years in this country, but most Republicans voted against it. Some, thank God, joined us and we passed it and sided with but most sided with the NRA. After Buffalo, Uvalde, Newtown, El Paso, Parkland, Charleston, Las Vegas, Orlando, I went to every one of those places. I spent hours and hours and hours with those families. Not a joke. Not a joke. Hours with them. I know what it's like under different circumstances to lose children. But lose children like they lost their children? Enough. We've had enough. It's time to pass the assault weapons ban. Look, I support the Second Amendment. I have two shotguns. I'm not, I, 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 the only thing I have really do is really target practice. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's no justification for a weapon of war. None. The speed of that bullet is five times that that comes out of the muzzle of most weapons. It can penetrate your vest. And by the way, as I pointed out when I was, got a pass the first time as a senator, in Delaware, we're a big gun owning state, a lot of duck hunters, a lot of hunters. And, uh, and I'd be going, and I literally went up and down the, the streams campaigning and going to the people who were part, who belonged to the, uh, the, the, uh, the NRA and others. And I'd say, how many, how many deer out here are wearing Kevlar vest? <laughs> you know, no, but I'm, but I'm seriously, think, think about it. What in God's name do you need an assault weapon for? It's an assault weapon designed to kill people, to defend America, to defend people. But folks, look, it's just, it's just, we're just, it's way out of hand. I've taken on the RNA and I beat them before and I plan on doing it again. And folks, we can do it again. Our children, our children should be in a situation of learning how, as I said, to read and write, not duck and cover. So in 46 days, if you want to save for America, America faces a choice. Republicans will once again side with the NRA and put American families and children at risk. And I believe some Democrats as well, and there's some Republicans who support us. It's not down the line, but it's the part of their platform. Democrats will ban assault weapons once and for all, God willing. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin McCarthy also talks about there being, being for a strong economy. But look what the Republicans have done. When I came to office, the economy was flat on its back. Millions out of work. Food lines are stretched from miles. Remember seeing all those food lines? People in nice-looking automobiles waiting for an hour, hour and a half just to have a, bucket of, uh, a, a box of food put in their trunk? In the United States of America. In the United States of America, that was happening. All across America. The most anemic job performance since Herbert Hoover was in place. And that's not hyperbole. That's a fact. So we acted quickly. We passed the American Rescue Plan, which lifted this nation from economic crisis <laughs> to economic recovery. And every single Republican voted for it. Nearly 10 million more jobs have been created since I've been president, the highest number of jobs in that period of time of any president of the United States of America. We have a 3.7% unemployment rate, the lowest in 50, more than 50 years. A record number, of new, record number of new small businesses created. And over 668,000 new manufacturing jobs in America. <laughs> the American Rescue Plan helped keep teachers, police officers, firefighters, first responders on the job. It provided the money needed to get schools open. 
And it was a big reason we had been able to vaccinate over 220 million Americans. More to do. And the infrastructure law we passed, we did get some Republican help for that. But that infrastructure law is the most significant investment in America since President Eisenhower's interstate highway system. Now, some Republicans voted for it and some were critical. But the truth is, there's a lot more Republicans out there taking credit for the new bridges and those bonds that are collapsing than actually voted for it. I love going by and they're, you know, and this is a great thing. I voted against it, but this is a great thing. <laughs> but folks, in addition to inheriting a failed MAGA Republican economy, we also confronted a global pandemic and Putin's war in Ukraine. And that's driven the global inflation we see today. That's why it's so important that we pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which I proposed from the beginning but didn't get passed till this summer. This law will cut costs for families, help reduce inflation at the kitchen table. The way we always measured inflation, and my, my dad was a graceful, hard-working guy. He worked, he, he worked a lot his whole life. And my dad used to say, he used to talk about whether inflation or the situation of a family that have breathing room is at the end of the month when you paid all your bills, did you have a little bit left? Just a little bit left. So there's more than one way, more than one way to deal with the inflation of a family, to lower the price of the things they have to deal with. Because that's what folks at home think about. How much are their monthly bills? How much do they have to pay for the necessities? This law is going to give them just a little more breathing room, as my dad would say. We pay more for our prescription drugs than any nation in the world. Well, for years, so many of us, for a long time, and many of the, the unions in here, every one of the unions here, have been trying to fix this problem. For years, Big Pharma has blocked us and Medicare from negotiating drug prices. But not this year. We beat Big Pharma. We finally beat them, first time. Big Pharma lost. And folks, now Medicare will have the power to do what so many Democrats and many Republicans in the past talked about doing, lowering prescription drug prices. They pay billions of dollars. They can negotiate lower prices like other countries do. And the seniors, we passed a law saying beginning in January, no senior, no matter what the cost of their prescription drugs, cancer drugs or whatever drugs they have, and some of them can be sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. No senior will have to pay, no matter what the cost of their drugs, more than $2,000 a year. <laughs> beginning, beginning in January. And, and if, you're, if, you're a med, if you're on Medicare and you have diabetes, the cost of your insulin, instead of being 30 to 40 to 50 times more than the cost to make that insulin, it costs 10 bucks to make that insulin. 10 and package it. But now, you cannot charge any senior, and we should make it for everybody. They voted down the other piece, but every senior will not have to pay more than $35 a month for the cost of the insulin. We wanted to cut the cost of insulin for everyone, for everyone, including the hundreds of thousands of children who have type 1 diabetes. But look, folks. Imagine being the parent of a child who had type 1 diabetes. You had no insurance and you had no coverage. You have to look at that child and know, and know that if he or she does not have access to that insulin, it will fundamentally affect their lives in ways that are going to be damaging for the rest of their lives. Imagine the feeling. My dad used to say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. And he'd always end by saying it's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay. Well, guess what? The Republicans blocked limiting that cost to 35 bucks for kids. As I said, it only costs 10 bucks for that prescription to be made and packaged. Drug companies are charging families more than 30 times as much for that drug on a monthly basis. And a lot of people just can't do it. Imagine, I said, being that mom and dad, needing that insulin. It has to be there. I was down in Virginia at a function and met a mom who said they have to ration the insulin. Be able, I mean, it's wrong. It's not who we are. We're going to fix that as well, I promise you. <laughs> Folks, 
Bottom line, this all is going to lower energy costs as well. Gas prices, I know I got criticized for going in the stockpile. Right? Well, guess what? Gas prices are down $1.30 a gallon. And in 41 states, plus the District of Columbia, the average gasoline price is less than $2.99. Look, the law makes the biggest investment ever. We invest in climate crisis. $369 billion to deal with the climate crisis. And it makes the tax code fairer. In 2020, 55 of the biggest corporations in the country paid $0 in federal income taxes. And they made $40 billion. It's not right. So we put a stop to it. And by enacting a corporate minimum tax of only 50, but 15%. Today, the days of big, profitable corporations paying nothing in federal income tax is over. Yeah. And guess what? Every single Republican voted against the Inflation Reduction Act. And when it actually comes to actually doing something about inflation, Republicans said no. And they said time and again that the first chance they get, they're going to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act. And here's what else Republicans are uh, in terms of their fiscal recklessness. Donald Trump and Republicans had no problem, had no problem enacting in his four years a $2 trillion tax cut that overwhelmingly benefited the top 1%, and they didn't pay for a penny of it, and it massively increased the federal deficit. Meanwhile, you know, we always say the Democrats are the big spenders. We brought down the deficit. <laughs> $350 billion the first year and nearly $1.5 trillion this year. And the Inflation Reduction Act is going to reduce it another $300 billion because over the next 10 years, because Medicare can reduce, can pay less for the drugs they have to buy for the seniors. So I don't want to hear it from Republicans. They're the ones who blew up the deficit. They're the ones, when we're the ones bringing it down. And now, thanks to the historic deficit reduction, we can afford to cancel $10,000 in student debt and $20,000 if you're on a Pell Grant. And for tens of millions of Americans making under $125,000, it's a game changer. And Republicans are already looking for their hand-picked judges to deny relief to those hard-working Americans. They will not succeed, in my view, but that's what they're looking for. And finally... With a straight face, Kevin McCarthy says the MAGA Republicans are going to restore faith in our elections. As we say in my faith, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> restore, restore faith in our elections? MAGA Republicans refused to accept the results of the 2020 election and the will of the people. 81 million people voted Democrat for president last time. Even though they lost, they lost court case after court case after court case after court case after court case, even in front of Trump-appointed judges. And recount after recount proved the results were accurate. It's become a litmus test in their party to pledge loyalty to Donald Trump by buying into the big lie. Now, I'm serious. You all see it on, all, all on television. Look, the fact is that a lot of them, I've had six Republican senators who I've known for some time come to me and I gave my word I'd never mention names and I never will, separately, telling me that they agree with this, that, or the other thing that I was proposing, but if I voted for it, it would cost them their election because they'd lose the primary. Well, you see what's happening. You see the mega Republican pro program being adapted by all these folks in the primary, and then once they get out of the primary, they're trying like hell to figure out how to get out from under that. No, no, I'm serious. You can't let the integrity of our elections be undermined. Democracy can't survive. It cannot survive. Not a joke. Can't survive when one side believes there's only two outcomes to an election. Either they win or they were cheated. That's not democracy. And that's where the mass majority of MAGA Republicans are today. They don't understand 
what every patriotic American knows. You can't love your country only when you win. Only when you win. So, folks, in just 46 days, democracy will be on the ballot. Americans will have to choose between the MAGA Republican platform, who have embraced extremism and the big lie, Democrats, independents, and mainstream Republicans who believe in the rule of law, rejecting the will of the people and accepting the results of a fair and free election is what we're about, not what they're about. Let me close with this. As I said earlier, my dad used to say, don't compare me to the Almighty, compare me to the alternative. This November, you have to choose to be a nation of hope, unity, and optimism, or a nation of fear, division, and darkness. I believe America will move forward to the future, a future with possibilities, a future in which we can build dream and hope. I know we can because I know this nation like you do. I know the American people. I know their courage. I know their hearts. I know our history. That's why, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and those of you who know me, no one ever doubts I mean what I say. The problem is I sometimes say all that I mean. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I've never been more optimistic. We're the only country in the world that's come out of every crisis stronger than we went into it. It's not just about building back to what it was before. We have a chance to build back in a way to make it better for everybody. Everybody. And I want to get back to the time when I'm debating Republicans or conservatives as heck, but believe in the institutions. Believe in the institutions. Have a fair and square fight about what we're doing. Think the court and the, and, and, and the Congress and the, and, 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 and the presidency or independent branches of government it should be treated with respect. That's what I'm looking forward to. You just got to remember who in God's name we are. We are the United States of America. And there's nothing, there's nothing beyond our capacity, not a single thing we can't do when we do it together. And the way to do that is start with the unions, to do it together, together, together. May God bless you all. May God protect our troops. And I should have started off by saying, excuse my back when I'm speaking. I apologize. Thank you all very much. God bless you all. Let's keep it going. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.